Shall we start? Here we go. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for being at this inaugural flagship innovator event. We are absolutely thrilled to feature this type of event, uh, especially in this environment. Um, our innovators have been incredibly generous uh, with their time and energy, and I am very both humbled and inspired by their contribution to, uh, to this series in this time. And uh, they are just as inspired to help our young people and have access to our young people and help them think about and invite them into the future. And so without fail, every single person that I contacted uh, indicated how important this was to them to be engaged and involved in creating a pathway for our students and with our students. So I just wanted to start off briefly uh, telling a little bit of story about a student I interviewed that kind of inspired this series. Um, his name is Manny and he's an aerospace engineer. And I said, uh, if we were talking and he goes, I know where to go for technical expertise. Iowa State is fabulous at technical expertise. What I'm really looking at is, will you tell me how to behave? How do I behave? How do I practice? How do I go? And that was the inspiration for the series. How do we model for people? Because the only way people learn how to behave is by giving them an experience of it and by connecting. So that's what is so fabulous about this theory. Uh, one of the, the, the theme for this series is access. And ironically, COVID has really brought this to our attention in a way we weren't paying attention to before because it's the only way we can do this. Uh, is the only way we have this real global portal to the world that is so flexible and dynamic and immediately accessible for our student is digitally, is electronically. So that's what's so inspiring is this is access with an A plus. And so we have logistical access through the portal. We have intellectual access to these brains, these fabulous innovators. We have 21 of them. Uh, we're going to continue to add, look at our student center, uh, student innovation center website. And more than that, we have behavioral access, a way that our students are longing for to see mirrored in these innovators, something for them and something that they can see of themselves for themselves. And uh, so one of the things uh, before we launch, the last thought I'll leave you with is, this is a really critical forum for our institution. Uh, it elevates our conversations. Um, I don't know if you are aware, our audience, that we have been designated by the Association of Land Grant Universities as uh, the, an innovation and prosperity university. And our president has elevated Innovate at Iowa State as a critical driver and translator of how we are participating with our industry partners and with our students. And so, as a university, um, I just want to be really clear. We have launched this um, portal. And if we are to participate in global commerce, if we are driving the revitalization of our industries and our communities, then this is a very deliberate portal for cultivating and deliberating, deli uh, deliberately creating these practices of invitation, discovery, inclusion for our students. And um, this allows and leverages the inherent diversity of our student population and the acquired diversity of our industry stakeholders. And that's what I think is so important. It's this permeable membrane in our university ecosystem that allows students to leave the security of their classroom to engage in the world. So as we launch, uh, Abram, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Karen. I'm so excited to be a part of this flagship series. Our roster of speakers has incredible insights, experiences, and perspectives to share with you. In most of our future sessions, we'll feature one speaker and have a highly interactive Q&A where you'll have opportunities to ask questions. Today, our format will be a little different. We have three leaders of innovation at Iowa State, and we're going to hear a little bit about their perspective on the initiatives that are ongoing. We will, at the end, have a time for a few questions, so I encourage you to take note of the Q&A box in your uh, event interface and be sure to share those questions with us as we move through our panel. 
Um, today, our three guest panelists are President Wendy Winterstein, Rick Sanders, President of the Iowa State University Research Park, and Jim Oliver, Director of the Student Innovation Center. I would also like to thank our flagship series team, including Karen Kearns, who you've just met, our fearless leader, Nakaya Rucker, Annie Arbuckle, Anna Luz, and thank the Innovations, Student Innovation Center for hosting our series. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome President Winterstein. Uh, she'll join us to speak about the Innovate at Iowa State brand campaign and to discuss current efforts to build off of ISU's longstanding culture of innovation and leadership in infusing entrepreneurship into the curriculum. Thank you for joining us, President Winterstein. Well, Agram, uh, it's just such a pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, thank you for that uh, uh, introduction. And I want to add my thanks to the Flagship Fridays team as well, uh, to you and for what you're doing. Uh, uh, I, I, I think it's wonderful to have an associate professor of English uh, that is wanting to infuse innovation and entrepreneurship into the curriculum for all of our students at Iowa State that are, that are interested and want to learn to write and understand uh, what it means to be an innovator and entrepreneur. So my big thanks to you. Uh, and of course, uh, to uh, Jim Oliver uh, for his leadership. I, I, I think everyone should recognize uh, the extraordinary record that Jim Oliver brings to the table. Uh, uh, Jim Oliver is the Larry and Pam Pittem Pithen, a uh, professor of uh, mechanical engineering. He's a university professor, as well as the director of the Student Innovation Center. Uh, so you two bring extraordinary talent and skill and very diverse talents and skill to the table. And then a very special thanks, uh, certainly, uh, to our team members uh, from uh, the College of Design, Anna Luz, and, and to Micaiah, Nakaya uh, uh, Rucker from the library and what they bring. But I'm saving my big thanks for Karen Kearns. She's our entrepreneur in residence. She's the spark plug uh, behind uh, what we're doing today. And I just want to make sure that everyone hears uh, how valuable I view Karen and her leadership for this effort. Uh, but it clearly is a team effort. But Karen, uh, I just want to say a big thanks to you. I begin by talking uh, just a little bit about as president, why did I decide to stand up a focus on innovation and entrepreneurship? Uh, in my uh, installation address, I talked about the fact that uh, it was at Iowa State uh, that the digital computer uh, was invented. Uh, and, and at that time, the university uh, thought about patenting that invention, but they chose not to. And I joked, can you imagine how things might have been different? if we would have made a decision to patent the first digital computer. So, so we are a university that is filled with many innovations, inventions, many entrepreneurs. And I really thought it was time for us to stand that up as our brand and thus the innovate at Iowa State. But when you think about, well, why did I feel so strongly about that? It was my time as Dean of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences and my work with our Agricultural Entrepreneurship Initiative under Kevin Kimley, uh, his leadership in the Department of Economics and the College of Ag and Life Sciences, really his leadership uh, that made me convinced after a decade of watching his work that this was making a tremendous impact uh, on our students. It was changing their lives because it was allowing them to think differently uh, to work differently with others, to collaborate at a different level. Uh, this was all enhanced because we received a gift from Roger and Connie Underwood uh, to fund this program. And so over this long decade, I saw so many positive aspects that I knew we needed to take what was happening in the College of Ag and Life Sciences and bring it forward in a big way to the university as a whole. I said to all the deans in the college, let's sit down, let's have a conversation about what this might mean in your college. And it was at that time then that I really understood that there was a lot happening in the Ivy College of Business in Innovation and Entrepreneurship, a lot happening in the College of Engineering, in the College of Human Sciences. So all around the university, there were pockets 
of opportunities for our students uh, to be engaged in innovation and entrepreneurship and where our faculty and staff clearly were engaged as well. So as the Dean sat around and talked about this idea, I have to tell you, quite honestly, there was a little bit of skepticism. Could this really be something uh, that we could uh, bring forward as the university brand? But over the first half year, first six months, it became clear that all the deans saw an opportunity. They saw an opportunity in their curriculum to differentiate our programs from other programs around uh, at other universities. Uh, they saw an opportunity to bring added value uh, to our students' education here and to further support the work that our faculty and staff uh, do in innovation and entrepreneurship. I'll also share with you that uh, as we began this process, I was really focused on entrepreneurship. You know, being an old dean of a college of agriculture, I was all about invention. I was all about uh, a solution to a problem, a new product, the next seedless watermelon. You know, I, that's how I was really thinking about it. But it was a, a faculty member over in the College of Engineering that told me I was missing the boat, that entrepreneurship was important, but innovation was even more important. And that innovation comes in many different ways. Uh, it's not always about creating something, creating a specific product that might be the basis for a business. So I learned a lot in this conversation that we held university-wide as well. And that's when I started realizing it really is innovation. Innovation may lead to a business, it may uh, become an entrepreneurial activity, but it might become a social good. It might be part of helping how a community uh, becomes stronger. So innovation, and that's how we ended up with this new brand, Innovate at Iowa State. And I think it's a brand uh, that regardless of uh, whether you wanna be an entrepreneur or not, wherever you happen to be, whatever work you're gonna do, being able to be an innovator is key to being successful. So that's a little bit about how we got here, Abram, and I. I, I think it is a great story of, of, of collaboration and innovation itself and how we brought all of our deans uh, together to, uh, to lift up Iowa State's work in innovation. Well, thank you, President Winterstein. That's a, a great introduction to the, the brand campaign. And I, I have to say, as a faculty member, it's, I've really noticed this leadership. It's been very apparent to me, uh, which leads me to my next question. Um, when we think about the student perspective, particularly undergraduates, but possibly graduates as well, what kind of impact do you hope this campaign and, and these efforts will have for students? You know, whether we are talking about an undergraduate student or, or a graduate student, I think these efforts really open the door uh, for them to think differently about their education, and about perhaps a research project they're engaged in, a scholarly paper they're writing, uh, I think it really is creating a different mindset and helping them do that. Um, and and it's, it's building an energy on campus that allows students across many, many different disciplines uh, to come together in ways they never would have otherwise, uh, so that you have individuals uh, in English and in business, perhaps talking to somebody in ag and biosystems engineering. Uh, so you get a different level of interdisciplinary interaction uh, that I think is more reflective of the real world uh, and, and prepares everybody uh, better for that, uh, that, that real world experience that we all get to have eventually as we leave the university. Um, I also think we have to realize that not every student at Iowa State is going to say, yes, I want to be part of Innovate at Iowa State. And that's fine because there's lots of things to be part of at Iowa State. But we think that this fills a very important niche. And it also connects us to a very important new facility, and that's the Student Innovation Center. And so now we have this beautiful new 100 and 
48,000 square feet, I think. Jim Oliver's probably thinking I should know that number by heart by now, uh, but a very big facility with lots of opportunities uh, for students to come together in an inter interdisciplinary way to work together on ideas, uh, to make things, uh, to innovate. Uh, uh, and uh, so, so the two all tie together. So we, now we have a program that faculty are infusing into the curriculum or into co-curricular activities and we have a wonderful new facility uh, that can really be the, the core facility uh, for what's going on in this area. Although I will say uh, that when you look around campus, uh, what we do in innovation and entrepreneurship is happening over in McKay. And it's happening over in buildings uh, in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and, and in Jardine. So while we know we have the Student Innovation Center, we also know that it's a network that has been built over the last couple of years. And it's a network that's gonna get bigger in terms of program and, and actual physical space. Wonderful, thank you for that answer. Um, you know, you've really articulated why Innovated Iowa State is so powerful for our success as an institution and for our impact on our students. Given the land grant mission of ISU, I wonder if you might reflect on how Innovated Iowa State contributes to those stakeholders. You know, I think given the challenges we're all facing, the simple answer might be now more than ever, uh, but I'm sure you have more things to say that, that we would love to hear. Well, uh, I believe, again, that having a workforce uh, prepared uh, to think about innovation, to think in an entrepreneurial fashion, serves Iowa very well, first of all. So our primary job at Iowa State University is to have this great crop of students graduating every December and May. And they go out into the workforce and they really change the world. Uh, and so I think we're, uh, through this pr program, preparing a very special set of graduates uh, to help lift Iowa up. But through our extension and outreach work, uh, that's another important aspect of what we're doing in entrepreneur, in innovation and entrepreneurship. And so across our 99 ca county campus, uh, we know that we're engaged uh, with business and industry through our small business development centers out at the uh, economic development and industry relations uh, core facility uh, at the Ivy College of Business. All of these programs that serve business and industry across the state, uh, they're all coming together too I, under this Innovate at Iowa State brand. So we're, we're very committed to it. But I, I have to take a minute and just tell you a funny story. Uh, about a month ago, one of our graduates uh, came to see me. He had uh, graduated from Iowa State, got a job with a large company, was very successful in that company. Uh, he decided to start his own business and, uh, and, and has had some nice success with it. He saw a need uh, that needed to be met, uh, and he figured out the technology and the work that can be done to meet this critical need in the livestock industry and, and is now moving forward in a very successful manner. And I think that's an example of what can happen uh, to support all of Iowa when we see these young graduates recognize that there's, there's a issue that needs to be addressed and the answer is through innovation. Wendy, I can uh, piggyback on that a little bit. Um, the What we have found is that people are able to translate their generalist as well as their technical skills, that they're going in with really specific mindsets. And here is where I see our industry partners are so critical, and I appreciate this membrane that we're opening up, this portal, because students have so much more confidence when we are going alongside them. And I know the person you referenced was mentored by a couple people in our industry. He participated yes. through our Aggie Eye program that matched him up with a mentor and uh, got that confidence about how to do that because that mentor sat down. So a critical component of the programs we're building with the Student Innovation Center are focused specifically on connecting these students with real world people and practitioners 
so that they have companions, somebody to do this with them. I, I think you're right, Karen. And, and when you're practicing being an innovator or an entrepreneur while you're at Iowa State, we really help uh, students understand that it's okay to have an idea and it's okay to learn from a, a failure. And I think having that safe space because you have a mentor, because you have the environment where you can bring forward an idea uh, that you can do it in an open way, you can be yourself, you can uh, really learn some lessons here uh, in a very safe space. And I, I, I think that's another thing that we offer to our students. Yes, President Winterstein, I, I wonder if you might expand on, on this issue a bit. I'm, I'm thinking about the power of mentoring, uh, particularly for innovation and entrepreneurship, because there's such a, a large unwritten curriculum, so to speak, of behaviors and, and mindsets and practices. You know, as you reflect on those students or, or colleagues who you've seen be successful in this area, what comes to mind as some of those mindsets and practices and, and things you need to learn and mentors can help you with? You know, a, a long time ago uh, when uh, I worked, as I was working with Kevin Kimley, um, Kevin Kimley told me that, that he always uh, was sure to not only be teaching kind of the business aspects of entrepreneurship, but he was also teaching entrepreneurship ethics. And, and I think that is part of what a mentor helps a young student understand. What, what does it mean? What are the ethics uh, associated uh, with uh, being an innovator, innovator or being an entrepreneur? And I, so we learn a lot of things. Uh, we learn a lot of things from our mentors. And, and if I would recall some of the lessons that Kevin Kimley taught me uh, as he was teaching his students, maybe I, I would just uh, share one of these. Um, you know, he always said you should play off your best front foot, you know, which really means how can you make things happen, uh, take actions that, uh, that, that are really reflective of the best case you can make and the, and the best play that you have. And I, I think that was a great, great comment. He also said that you should invest for tomorrow that uh, if you're interested in being an innovator and an entrepreneur, it's not about uh, uh, instant gratification. It's not about having everything that you think you might need at this moment. I think sometimes we in our society have gotten into a habit of, of things really replacing what's, what are the real valuable things in life. And, and that's, that's having a plan and a set of goals to achieve it and the mentors to help you be there, uh, be successful in achieving it. Another uh, lesson that Kevin Kimley taught me was that you, uh, you should never be a fraud, that you should always be honest. Uh, I, I, I think that he was very clear that you should never uh, try to portray something for what it is not. Uh, you may hope that's what it is, but if you haven't really reached uh, uh, that point, you shouldn't portray that you have. And so I, I think that was another great lesson uh, from Kevin Kimley. Um, and then another one uh, that Kevin always taught me uh, is that you should help those in need. And I think regardless of um, the work you're doing in innovation and entrepreneurship, if you're not aware uh, about those around you uh, and, and problems that exist that you might have an idea for uh, that could help, you should be stepping in there. You, as a, as a member of the community, it's about helping those in need. So there's lots of lessons, and those were the lessons that Kevin Kimley teaches his class and the lessons he taught me as we talked together about what it meant to be uh, part of of a, of an ethical uh, entrepreneurship group, but uh, mentors will teach individuals lots of different lessons. So I've just shared a few that Kevin Kimley and I talked about in this world of ag entrepreneurship, but, but know that every mentor you interact with is going to teach you a different set of lessons. And, and one advice I'd give to our students today is 
Keep track of what you're learning from your different mentors. Take the time to write the notes down. What is it that you are learning uh, from this particular individual? Because as you go through life, you will be integrating those lessons into who you are, but you'll also want to be able to reflect back and remember that it was Anders Abrams that taught me this. And, and so, so take notes, keep a record of what you're learning from those mentors around you. Thank you so much, uh, President Winterstein. Uh, one thing I wonder if you might expand upon, you, you cited some lessons there that really sound exciting to me, this idea of ethics, that yes. a promising way to think about innovation or entrepreneurship is, is to think about solving problems that matter for people in need um, and to seek out mentors and record what you learn from them. If, if you were to speak broadly about, you know, where we're at now, the resources available at Iowa State, the, the challenges facing our, our state and our country, uh, what would be some places you would say, if, if you want to do something special, maybe start here? Well, Anders, thanks for that question. Because I think um, if we all want to be part of our community today, it means that we all actually uh, stand up and take personal responsibility and that we care for each other. And uh, this means that everybody should be having a face covering on that everybody should be maintaining physical distance from others, that everyone should be washing their hands and, and staying home when they're sick. And that's our Cyclones Care campaign. And that's probably not the answer you're looking for there, Anders, but I'll tell you, that's the biggest risk facing us today, that uh, we are in the biggest health crisis in 100 years or more, the biggest financial crisis since the Great Depression, and, and really having the most serious conversation about racism in 60 years. Uh, but we're gonna get through all this if we will all care about each other. If we care about each other and follow the safety and health practices that we know work, then that means we can have a quicker economic recovery. And then that will help us address the other issues that we see our society needing to address finally at this point. Uh, President Winterstein, you mentioned also uh, that other component that remind, even though you don't state it specifically, um, that critical component, the innovator's ethics is stewardship. That mm -hmm. because it's so important, nobody can innovate without creating a community and an ecosystem for that innovation to grow. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we're working with on our students is how are you stewarding this, both yourself, self-awareness and situational awareness? How am I caring for the system that I am going to grow in? It's my Petri dish. So I think that that's one thing that Iowa State is doing that really differentiates its program is we are focused on this idea of eternal return. We are doing meaningful contribution that not education as an outcome of your college experience, but significance, impact, contribution, stewardship of those things I've been given those things my faculty and staff members have invested me in, invested in me, um, and stewardship of what my employer is going to invest in me as a future meaningful contributor. Well, thank you, uh, Karen. Thank you, uh, President. Uh, I, I love this this final note that you know. Uh, I think it's important when we think about innovation and entrepreneurship that uh, it's not all just excitement and it's not, uh, you know, it's also a lot of tenacity and discipline, but equally, these are the things that the dreams are made of. Um, I want to be cognizant of your time, uh, President Winterstein. We're coming up here on your time. Would you like to give a, a final thought before we let you go and, and thank you for, for sharing your time with us? Well, I just want to again thank the team. Uh, because I think what you're doing uh, through this program is really making the Student Innovation Center come alive during COVID-19. Uh, we couldn't do the kind of launch that we would have preferred if we were in pre-COVID times, but you're making, uh, making the Student Innovation Center be present, be here now. So I just want to say thank you again. It's been a real pleasure to be with you today and uh, appreciate all your leadership and your commitment. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, President Winterstein. We're so lucky to, to have your leadership and we thank you for your time today. Thank you. Our next panelist that I'd like to welcome is Rick Sanders. He is the president of the Iowa State Research Park. And uh, he is here to talk to us about all the exciting things happening there. Uh, welcome, Rick. Abram, uh, before you start, just one moment, uh, briefly before you start, I just want to remind our audience that this is uh, this type of panel. It would typically we'll have one speaker and engage with them more directly. And that um, today we are fortunate to have three of our innovators as a launch, kind of as a knowledge. I forgot to mention that up front. So this format will be a little bit different. Uh, and we are really thrilled to have Rick with us. Yeah, uh, so thank you so much. Uh, thanks for inviting me to be part of this. Uh, it's always such a treat to be able to listen to and then try to follow uh, everything that Wendy has to say for us, but she has set us all on such a great path. I am so excited that we have uh, branded and embraced who we are, who we have been, who we are today, and frankly, what we're going to be in the future. Uh, there's always been innovation at Iowa State. In fact, the ISU Research Park exists solely because uh, there was a group of people at Iowa State who made the determination that we needed to have a place where the innovation happening at Iowa State, at the student, at the faculty, at the staff level, had a place to grow and flourish and in fact, we think of the, the brand Innovated Iowa State, uh, which is so apropos for campus, but here at the Research Park, our brand is a place where innovators can flourish. And we think that those dovetail so nicely. That's what we exist to do. And so it's really an exciting time uh, to be as engaged with campus as we can. But now all the work that Jim Oliver and his team and others are doing to give us a focus point, because I think President Winterstein was 100% right, Innovation is happening everywhere in the Iowa State community, everywhere on campus, in all our facilities that aren't located on campus. And now with the Innovation Center, I think we have a focal point place to draw those innovators together, to really encourage um, uh, our students to see the opportunities that are there and then see how they can take what exists and innovate on that to really create something uh, that expands um, what we're doing in every area. Uh, so, so our reality out here at the research park is that you don't have to you don't have to go very deep into any problem that's facing us in the world before you get right here to the Midwest, to the state of Iowa, and frankly to Iowa State University as being part of the solution to that problem. And all we're trying to do here at the research park is create spaces and create programs that help those that are innovating, both individuals and entities, have a spot where they can do it more rapidly, where they have more access to tools, where they have more connection and collision with others that are working in similar areas, or at least in the innovative sphere. And so we're really excited to be part of all this. Thanks, Rick. I love that introduction and tying together of the, the themes of Innovated Iowa State. And I also really appreciate your respect for the tradition because uh, none of these efforts happen without a long history of people doing great things at IS, Iowa State. I wonder if you would be willing to talk a bit about the research park. Um, in my research, I was just astonished by the scope and diversity of the things you're doing. I, I wonder for those of us in the audience who may not be as familiar, if you could just give us a sense of the, the things you're doing with the research park. Yeah, so, so we are uh, the best, unintentionally, one of the best kept secrets uh, of Iowa State and, and the city of Ames. So we're located uh, about two miles south of campus, uh, right here, just on the other side of Highway 30. Um, and, and currently there's 400 acres that are part of the research park, that, that's 16 buildings. And at any given time, we have about 100 companies of all sizes, right? So uh, the largest of large, if you think big green tractors, uh, they have a location out here all the way down to one person working in a lab, trying to, uh, trying to innovate whatever it is they're working on and everything in between. And one of the things we're really excited about is um, over the last half dozen years or so, 
we have really started to do a better job engaging with undergraduates and bringing them out here. In fact, at any given time, we have about 250 interns from the from campus that are working out here. And yes, it is on the Sciride line and you can get here from there. Um, but one of the really exciting stories there is we think through what, what futures of our undergraduates look like. Um, one of our companies out here generally has somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 interns. And in the last two years, they've had 27 of those interns graduate. All 27 of them were offered full-time employment with this, again, large, think big green tractor kind of company. All 27 were offered full-time employment and 26 of the 27 ended up at least starting their careers now uh, with this company. You don't get that kind of connection and opportunity to really expand um, your innovative and entrepreneurial talents, whether it's, whether, so entrepreneurship does not have to mean a single person startup, right? We have entrepreneurship at every level. And in fact, the largest companies sometimes are the most entrepreneurial and most innovative as they look forward. There's huge opportunities for that. And so we're so excited to partner with Jim Oliver and, and his team as they bring the innovation center I guess literally and figuratively out of the ground, right? We've seen the literal part of it coming out of the ground. Now we're got to get to the figurative part of bringing all the programming out of the ground because we want there to be a direct connection both ways, right? Uh, for, from out here at the research park over onto campus through the Student Innovation Center, but from the Student Innovation Center and everything that's happening and going to happen there out here to the research park back and forth. Rick. One thing I'm aware of is uh, we are talking about people, not innovation in buildings, but people having an experience of innovating and innovation. And the buildings are the practices. What occurred to me is we should really be calling our research park an economic impact park, right? Because really that's what you're talking about is really outcomes that are significantly impactful. Um, and a lot of the innovation that has happened in that research park is really thriving and thriving in our uh, in, in even a global economy. Can you speak to a couple of those things in innovations? That yeah, I, I, I mean, I think I would I would take that and I would speak to what's really happening here at the park in terms of growth and innovation. So right now we've got twenty five hundred people that work at the park, but even more important than that, we've got about 7,000 throughout Iowa that are working on things that originated here in the park, that go through the park. Uh, of the last six uh, IPOs, which is uh, initial public offerings of stock, so it's when a company becomes public, of the last six IPOs in the state of Iowa, five of them came through the research park. Uh, Wendy did a great job talking about Kevin Kimley and the unbelievable work that he and, and everybody associated with the Ag Startup Accelerator are doing, but we've just had two major acquisitions out of what, you know, four years ago were one person startup companies, and now they've been uh, uh, acquired in, in huge deals and hugely impactful for the way uh, we're going to see our future. In those two cases, it's specifically in the agriculture realm. But across the board, when you look at what a company like Workiva has done, which was started here from zero uh, and now has grown to a worldwide company that employs somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 people uh, throughout the world and is making an impact on how uh, reporting to governmental agencies is done from our largest companies, you think of those things happening from right here, um, and, and the answer I always give, so I've got three adult children, and one of them had an unbelievable experience here through the research park. He was an Iowa State uh, student and, and graduate, but he connected with a company here at the research park, and it has really been a great foundation for the rest of his life. The reality is, um, no matter what you want to do, no matter where you want to be or what you want to impact, you can do it from right here if you will just really dig in and try to find those that are working on something similar or those companies that are connected to Iowa State University that are working in that realm. Uh, there's a pathway for that. Thanks, Rick. You've made a powerful case for the impact on the research park, on our state economy, and on the lives of the entrepreneurs and students who have internships out there. Uh, as you look forward and think about this innovative Iowa State campaign, 
Uh, you mentioned a bit trying to work more closely with the Student Innovation Center. What are you seeing on the horizon? How is the research park going to contribute to innovative Iowa State in the future? Yeah, well, first and foremost through partnerships, and that's that's partnerships clearly with campus and drill that all the way down to the department chair level and even faculty level. Uh, having partnerships with students and making sure that we're marrying up students and companies and situations in the right way, but also going the other way and making sure that we are working hard um, it, with some companies in some situations, we're kind of the front porch to Iowa State University. Industry tends to speak a little different language and move at a little different pace than we do in academia. And sometimes we need a translator. Sometimes we need that converter piece that can make the two fit together. And so we try really hard to provide that. We also try really hard to make sure that all the resources that Iowa State University has. So if you think of this, if you just drew a five mile radius circle uh, around any point that you want to here on campus or out at the research park, and you think about the resources that fall within that circle from the Ames lab to the USDA laboratories, all the things that we can bring together within that close proximity that's not really known about. I mean, you spoke to, maybe it's not even known about on campus, let alone the world at large, all these different resources uh, and assets that we can bring to bear in one spot. We've got to be a part of doing a better job of making sure that's known, both on campus and throughout the world. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm really excited to ask you this next question because you have such a unique perspective in your role and, and with your, your organization there. Um, in your experience, when you, you watch these companies launch, you, you watch them work, uh, what lessons or, or, or perspectives or insights have you gained about what makes for success uh, when we're trying to innovate? Yeah, so I mean, um, so bravery, right? Uh, it, it takes a core belief and some bravery uh, to come forward with an idea that's different, that's different than what's accepted. And when you get down to what innovation is, um, it, it's it's more asking why not than why, right? Uh, the why sometimes is it will get trapped in that why. Why does this happen? And, and why not is more powerful in a lot of cases. Why can't we do something this way? Why can't we do better? What do we need to do to do better? And that we see that, we're seeing it today, right? We're seeing it today in every area of life that it takes real bravery to offer something a little different. It takes real bravery to stay the course of what you know to be right, what you know uh, to be the best path when others around you want you to just conform and and go you know go in a certain go in the easy direction innovation is not easy in fact innovation is all about hard it's about figuring out the hard and the 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 people and the entities who have been successful out here are those that work collaboratively but they work collaboratively in a way that they're willing to take the challenges. They're willing to be brave in trying something a little bit different. Um, and that's what we've seen, I believe, from the companies that have the most success out here. Rick, you speak to something very important too, the idea of discovery, because really innovation is not always invention, right? Innovation is really discovering and the capacity to take risks, tolerate risk, be a, um, and a, a capacity to allow for discomfort uh, as you think about it. And this is something that we really look forward to building with our students. When we talk about where our program is going, we have some fabulous short circuits and circuits coming up that are going to really explore how do innovators behave? What do they need to do? But I'm really glad you spoke to bravery. I did want to get, tell me that personal story. Remember we talked about when I asked you the question, um, what, wh why are you an innovator? Tell me the first time well, you remember being an innovator and you said to me. Yeah, yeah so uh, one of my early memories is uh, in, in my, so I grew up in, in Mayberry back when May, growing up in Mayberry was a pretty normal thing, but um, little tiny mountaintop town in Alabama and, and for whatever reason, I wasn't the oldest, I wasn't the fastest, I wasn't the smartest, I wasn't any of those things. But for some reason, I was the kid who made up the games that all, you know, we'd have 15 or 20 of us playing every day. 
and and it was really interesting. I, I remember having the epiphany of nothing ha it, it, nothing new is happening when I'm not around. So I would show up at the schoolyard or in the woods, and a group of my buddies would be together, and they would just be kind of messing around, not really doing anything. And just because of who I am, we get organized and and do even if it was a disorganized thing, we would figure out what kind of trouble we were going to get into or what, what kind of fun we were going to have that day. And and it the, the reality is it stayed with me. Here we are 50 years later. And now I get to run a place whose sole purpose of existence is to do exactly that. It's to to provide a space where we can challenge the normal, where we can challenge the routine, where we can challenge what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I appreciated Karen uh, reminding me of that. Uh, it, it's fun to look back and realize that that uh, some of us are just wired a little differently. And I don't mean this in a uh, we don't want to get along or anything like that, but we want to question because we've always done it this way is not a good enough answer to some of us. Um, and, and I believe those that are probably uh, engaged in this series, they have to have a little of that in them because that's part of the process to innovate is asking, is there a better way? Is there a different way uh, that can reach more people? Is there something we can do? And um, so thanks, Karen. Now, it, it, it's fun to think about that that's more of um, who I am rather than what I do. And I think the point is, too, it's not like other people don't think about these things. When I asked you, you said, ask me how I breathe. And that I thought that was really profound. Um, and I think what we're getting at with the students is innovation is a lot about play and imagination. And in fact, when you think about how primitive human beings survived and grew and um, how we evolved beyond primitive into fire and invention, it's because we are wired to create. We are wired to imagine, but rarely do we do that until we're threatened. Mm -hmm. That's why this COVID environment is so interesting mm -hmm. because here it is opening up this magnificent opportunity for us to finally realize that maybe online, maybe these portals is a really critical way to open access to our university ecosystem. And so I just, I really liked that you focus on it's how I behave and we can replicate that. We can show students how to be with them and companion them in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Rick, um, I have to say, I, I love your energy. You're making me feel awfully brave. I'm about ready to hop, hop on SciRide and come right down come there. Uh, I think many of our students um, who are tuning in right now may be feeling the same way. Um, and so I would like to turn it right now to our, our moderator, Nakaya Rucker. I think we have a student, uh, Sarah Stewart, who asked a really great question. Nakaya, would you, would you care to share that question with Rick? I'm happy to do that. So the question from Sarah is, what other qualities besides bravery do you see in innovators at the research part and in the workforce? Yeah, I mean, so, so, and, and let me start with this. When I say bravery, I'm not talking about somebody who's, who's willing to put themselves in, in potential physical harm or anything like that. I mean, that may be part of it, but, but bravery, first of all, is just a willingness to do that thing that makes you uncomfortable, that thing that you're a little bit afraid of, and it's different for all of us. But the other things I would say about the great innovators out here are they're relentless. They are relentless in the pursuit of whatever it is they're looking for, and they don't get easily discouraged by wrong answers or mistakes because they're committed to there's a better answer, there's a different answer, there's a different process, there's something more that we can do in a better way. And just because you know, Thomas Edison, you don't have to look very far that he was the epitome of failure, 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 and then you have a success, right? And, and you see that at different levels from all our really successful innovators out here is it's just this relentless commitment to get to that answer, whatever it is. And you don't let the stumbles, the inevitable stumbles that are going to happen along the way, deter you from, from the goal, right? Not, not, the, not the path to get there, but where you're trying to get. 
Thanks, Rick. I think we have one time for one more question uh, with you, and I think it dovetails really nicely with your response there. Uh, you know, I'm really excited of hearing about Research Park. I'm an undergraduate or graduate student. How can I be preparing to be the, the next person who's a success story coming out of Research Park? What should I be doing? What can I be working on? What should I be studying? Who should I be talking to? What would your suggestions be? Yeah, so study anything, right? The, so the example I gave uh, of the you know 50 different interns from all different backgrounds, um, uh, all different uh, uh, areas of study, uh, all different interest levels, um, be talking to everybody. If you want, if you're talking about specifically engaging with us, I would just encourage you to engage with us, right? Any Anybody can reach out to me anytime and make sure we're aware of where your interests are and we'll try to marry you up. We've got a phenomenal staff member out here named Allison Doyle, uh, who her sole job is to make sure we're making connections at all times, uh, both from the research park to the university. And when I say university, I mean all the way down to the student level. Uh, Jim Oliver has been gracious to allow us to have a space that we're gonna start to occupy pretty regularly in the Student Innovation Center. I think that's gonna be an opportunity to become aware of what's happening out here. Um, it, it's across, so it's completely across the board. The companies that are at the research park, uh, they're here because they want something more, and that more comes from Iowa State University. It can be in Iowa State University's research capabilities. It can be in Iowa State University's specialized resources and equipment. But more times than not, and almost 100% of the time, regardless of what else they need, they want access to the best and brightest student talent that's out there. And that's where it fits in with all of our students, undergraduate or graduate. We just need to make sure you're aware that these companies doing these kind of things are out here so that we can find a great fit for, for you and for them. Um, and, and like, I'm not hard to find. Um, R. Sanders at iastate.edu. Uh, is my email um, and pretty easy to find my cell phone as well. Allison Doyle, like I say, is really, really regular and and we want to hear from you. We want to help any way we can. Um, so please reach out to us and, and we'll sure start to uh, make sure you're aware of everything that's happening out here. Thank you so much, Rick. I just dropped a link to Iowa State Research Park in the chat for everybody, so you can go there, check it out. You'll see there about. You can find Allison and all the other great things that are going on there, including updates and newsletters and contact information. Thank you so much, Rick. Absolutely. Uh, your, your work's an inspiration. We're all really excited to see what happens next. So excited to have been part of this. Thank you guys so much, and I look forward to what we're going to do in the future. Karen, super job. Next, we're going to invite our, our next panelist, Jim uh, Oliver. He is the director of our newly opened and one of a kind in, in the country, maybe the world, Student Innovation Center. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Abram. How are you? Very good. Good. So well, okay. the, Go ahead. the first thing would be just to ask you to tell us about the innovation, Student Innovation Center. Sure. Um, it's a it's an amazing uh, following both President Winterstein and uh, Rick Sanders. It's a, a tough act to follow. Rick's uh, enthusiasm is is infectious, as you can tell, and uh, it's, he's just a wonderful colleague to have here at ISU and helping out with everything. So, as, as President Winterstein said, um, and we all know, ISU has been a, you know, a long legacy of innovation from the at NASA Berry computer to round bailing to lead pre solder. Um, you know, we have a tremendous legacy of innovation and and as both rick and president winterstein said it's still going on it's going on all over campus so i guess the way i hope everybody thinks of the student innovation center is that it is the physical manifestation of that brand identity that we're trying to build that innovated iowa state so when i talk about it, i talk about it as the nexus on campus so a, a focal point that inspires everybody students faculty staff everybody to innovate with experimentation, um, interdisciplinary collaboration, and a free exchange of ideas in, in a very inclusive environment. So I, I want people, everyone, to run into others that they wouldn't normally interact with. Um, you know, we tend to silo our students into these majors. I'm, I'm uh, you know, 
a victim of it as well, right? You, as, as President Winterstein said, we go through a university curriculum and you might get an, an occasional elective here or there, but you get out in, in four years or so and you're, you declare yourself, say, a designer or an engineer or a marketing person, and then you go to the real world and, and the real world is, is, uh, is completely different. You, you need to work with all kinds of different people. You need to understand um, their constraints and their, their, their needs. And, and it's, it takes a while as you, as you reach um, your professional life to appreciate all the diversity in, in a workplace. And the more diversity you have, obviously the more dynamic and successful a company is. So, so the center, it's, it's intended to serve everybody, the entire university community. We've got really unique facilities and workspaces uh, foster innovation across all aspects of the land grant mission. That's probably the most unique aspect of it. It's not just for entrepreneurship. Innovation is a broader umbrella. Um, and so we talk about civic innovation and social entrepreneurship, um, all kinds of ways and, and innovating in, in all aspects. So I want it to be welcoming, vibrant. Um, you see things happening, you ask what's happening, get engaged, get involved, meet people, um, get new ideas, creativity, experimentation. Uh, evaluation, certainly entrepreneurship, and I want to in, embrace that intersection of, of traditional disciplines. So that's the, the big picture of where we see the, the center fitting and this, uh, the role that it plays. Thanks, Jim. I think, uh, you know, the, the big question that, that a lot of people in the audience right now probably have is, is how can I get involved? If I'm a student, a grad student, faculty member, um, I'm really excited about what's what's happening at the Student Innovation Center and the idea that it's open to everyone is really appealing to me. Who do I contact? How do I start? What can I do to get involved? Well, kind of like what Rick said, obviously go to the website. You can contact me. I'm just the first Oliver from 1991. I got the first Oliver at Iowa State. So uh, that's my email address. You can reach out to me directly. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, announcements coming up on our website uh, for upcoming innovation programming uh, uh, activities and events that uh, will will engage all of uh, the whole community, I hope. Uh, we're also accelerating our social media activity. You'll soon see um, um, action on all the social media platforms. And uh, within the building, we have digital signage that will be um, broadcasting the events and activities that are going on in the center. And I know Karen, I'm not going to steal her thunder, but she's coming after me and she's going to describe in, in a lot of detail um, several of the uh, activities that we have right now rolling out. And it's a, it's a very exciting time. Uh, so that's the, those are the main ways to get engaged. But obviously, just reach out to me um, and we can point you in the right direction and get you engaged. Um, the clubs, uh, we've got room for student organizations. We will have applications for student organizations to to actually have a home in the center. Uh, we have all kinds of resources for, um, for everyone. So um, I'm excited to, the, the doors are open. Our hours are 7.30 in the morning to right now at nine o'clock at night. We're gonna extend those hours as we, as we roll things out. But please come in, walk around, take advantage of the resources. We have the cafe on the top floor, student run cafe, uh, student run retail on the main floor, uh, all kinds of interesting activities. We, we had to repurpose some of the facilities for um, pandemic planning, so we don't have our full contingent of maker spaces yet, but those will soon be um, act active, um, probably in the next month or two, we'll be able to use those. And uh, it's just a, it's a wonderful time, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Thanks, Jim. Um, you know, I had a great opportunity to, to tour the Student for Innovation Center. And one of the things that struck me is uh, on that tour that you talked about was the way in which this is really a unique facility and the program is designed in a unique way. It's a real differentiator for Iowa State. But I wonder if you might speak to what impact, you know, if you look ahead to five years, what's this impact going to be for innovation at Iowa State that the center uh, will allow? Sure. Um, I used to say facetiously as I toured people around that uh, with the resources that we have available for our student orgs that, that make competitive um, projects, so you think of the PRISM solar car, and there's many, many of those. Uh, they, those are passionate students that work very hard on these uh, volunteer projects, and then they compete nationally, sometimes internationally. 
I used to say facetiously that with all these resources we have available, that we all of our clubs will be top 10 finishers in the next five years. But And, and I say that more seriously now. It's just tremendous. I think the center will really distinguish ISU as, a, as the premier innovation-driven university. So we looked around. I've been involved in planning committees for probably five years or so, and a lot of work went into looking at what other universities are doing, what we have here on campus, uh, what we could use more of, what would distinguish us. Um, other places, you know, they're try everybody's trying to innovate. Everybody realizes that uh, we can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. But most universities, you'll see a fairly modest um, collaboration between a college or some other units, you know, maybe business and, and engineering. Nobody in the, in the country has embraced innovation with the scale of investment or as ambitious a scope as we have here at ISU. It it's really is unique. And I think it will absolutely distinguish us. So every college in the, the university has a committed uh, space in the building and they're engaged with the center and its mission. Um, think of it as an as a experimental test bed. So we're students, faculty, anyone can innovate with say teaching and learning, integrating research with that education process, with economic development, entrepreneurship, and even community engagement. Um, and as we try these things, we expect some will work and some won't work. If they work, the goal is that they diffuse out and start to change the culture within the university. And, and we, we continue to innovate and, and improve how we do things and, and make our students more competitive in their careers. If they don't work, we move them off and try something else. So it's a, it is literally a, a test bed to try these things. And last but not least, I, you know, there's a lot of people asking, well, how do I get engaged? What, you know, do I fit? Do I belong? And I, I've tried to kind of distill it down to four pillars of innovation. So whether you, you've got a new course or a, a startup idea or a, a club, you know, if you can span these some subset of these four things, I think you belong, you need to be in the Student Innovation Center and, and try it and use it. So those would be experiential learning. So you learn by doing, fail frequently and fast and, and uh, learn from it. An interdisciplinary scope. So we want you to meet and, and understand and appreciate others from other disciplines. Have an entrepreneurial mindset. And that means not necessarily um, the next Zuckerberg, you need to be entrepreneurial if you're in a big company and, and understand how to disrupt within a big organization. And finally, have a global perspective. That's where the not only the needs are, but the opportunities uh, for uh, having a global impact. So if you can span those four elements, I think you have a very uh, strong case to be deeply engaged in the Student Innovation Center. Thanks, Jim. Uh one of the things that really struck about your record, you, I mean, you've been an innovator, you've been an entrepreneur, you've done it as a, a researcher, as a teacher, as a, a leader and administrator. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you'd share something uh, uh, with our students and our audience about what drives you to innovate or, or what's an example of a time in your life where you really felt like this is innovation and, and I really have a passion for it. Yeah, it's a, it's, it is a, it's kind of an archetype, I guess, like Rick said. I. I've always had this diversity of interests, I, I think, um, from a young age. So interested in history and in economics and psychology. I just got a broad, you know, liberal education. And, uh, and I, I am an engineer, obviously, but I, I just was fascinated with how humans, you know, how do we perceive things and how, how that all works. I guess what really attracted me to ISU in the very beginning was a, a research center started by my colleague that, that became the Virtual Reality Application Center. And it was it was driven uh, as an interdisciplinary uh, uh, group. So you know, we have technologists working with psychologists, working with sociologists, and all these different people coming together to look at interesting problems. And, and you learn so much from others from, from different fields. It was, just, it was just really a fascinating opportunity. And, uh, and then I took a little detour from my academic career and spent three or four years in a uh, uh, software business and flew around the world and learned um, how the world works and how, how, you, how the economy works and how solving real problems for people um, and making a business out of that. It was a really eye-opening experience to do that. Uh, the company had just had an IPO and had some explosive growth. And uh, I did that. I tried to start a few companies, some successful, some unsuccessful. And uh, it's just a, a part of my DNA, I guess, is the, uh, that, that passion to continue to, you know, 
learn from others and look for those problems. Like Rick said, um, you know, it, 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 it's so much about um, understanding what the challenge is and who, why do we do it this way and why can't we, can we think about it another way? And it's, a, it's just a fascinating way to, a mindset to have that I've had, you know, in, the, in academia and in the private sector and, and uh, I'm passionate about it, clearly. It's just part of what drives me. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, we have time if you want to maybe address our audience and give a few parting thoughts as we as we look forward to the rest of the semester and to the upcoming activities that will be happening associated with the Student Innovation Center. Sure. Well, we we are open, and uh, you may have a class in in the building because uh, they're they're happening right now. I hope we can continue to do that. Um, as I mentioned, we're not fully operational at this moment due to some of the uh, disruption from the pandemic. But I hope by January we're fully operational with all of our maker spaces. One of the things that I, I, you know, you can look online and see all the different resources that are available. Um, we talk about maker spaces and we've got a diversity of physical artifact creation capabilities, 3D printers, textile machines, all kinds of amazing uh, collection of, of resources to create physical artifacts, but a very unique resource in the center I want students to know about, we call it the digital media shop. And think of it as a studio, but I think about it as our digital makerspace because we all know that we, we aren't real until we're digitally present. So whether you have a class project, uh, a club, a startup idea, anything like that, if you need to capture video, audio, uh, curate that, uh, publish that, that we have a tremendous resource. There's nothing like it in the entire university. There are pockets of it in various places, but this is a big um, and well-equipped resource for the entire university. Uh, there's just so many things to, to, uh, to show off and talk about. But what I'm really excited about, like, like uh, Rick said, we've got this physical resource, and then we have this tremendous momentum at, that Karen has brought to the table uh, by mustering and uh, all kinds of volunteer effort and coordination across all these different segments of the university to everybody is pulling in the same direction. This innovative Iowa State is really taking off. And I'm going to turn it back over to Karen to uh, describe some of our exciting programs that are coming up. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, in our final segment today, we want to welcome Karen Kearns uh, to Tell us a bit about these exciting innovations that are happening. And so, Karen, uh, tell us, what exciting initiatives are you working on as entrepreneur in residence? So just like uh, Rick said, Rick Sander said, ask me how I breathe, everything is exciting, um, in part because of the spirit that several people mentioned ahead of me of what's next, right? Um, what, how can we? What could we? The imagine if. And that's why this is called what if. Um, so we have lots of things coming up, but the first one I want to say is this. The best thing coming up is our students. They are where the seed of all of this is occurring. So every student, so a lot of the opportunities that have come forth is because of Austin Agner or because of uh, Reed Duncan or because of John Hanley or Sarah Hansen or um, uh, whoever it might be, um, uh, Charles Winnick. And, they are coming up with these ideas and we create opportunities. So this is mm -hmm. innovation for students with students by students. And so as they have ideas, we are creating all these short circuits, this flagship series. Um, uh, Sage from the Daily was interested in uh, what would it look like if we had public voices here and a session on how to innovate public voices. And so um, this is where our grand invitation for our students and our industry collaborator, collaborators are, is to companion them, to do it with them. And our industry collaborators are just really rushing to the table to meet students where they are and really lean into how can we collaborate and create with you. That's the most fabulous thing that's happening is our students. And um, so here's some things that are going on. One, first of all, check the Innovation Center website, which will soon be the Innovated Iowa State uh, website, where Innovation Center is one place that we practice that. Um, secondly, also, every college has someone who is doing innovation and entrepreneurship, every single one. Uh, 
And so right now that's Kent Kirby in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, but also you, Abram. Uh, your composition classes are incorporating innovation and innovation mindset in how do we think. You're having global conversations with all these students who are doing this writing requirement. You're giving them something, a place to land. Um, the, we have Kevin Kimley in the Ad College, Anna Luce in the College of Design. We have Linda Neem in the College of Human Sciences, Dave Sly in Engineering. and uh, Amazingly, uh, everything that the Papa John is doing, as I look at as in part one of the periods we put on our innovation sentence, right? So those are all resources. Next, I want to talk specifically about what's coming up. Oh my gosh, so excited. So first of all, we have coming up is the next week's flagship innovator speaker is Robert Picconi. He's the CEO of Energy Vault. He's been on Wall Street, CNN, um, uh, huge announcements, just won two major awards in 2019, the World Changing Idea Award, and in 2020, the Energy Vault um, was named the Technology Pioneer by the World Economic Forum. These are huge, these are global awards, and to have someone like him here is absolutely fabulous. And wait, there's more, Johnny. <laughs> so um, as I think about what the more is, the more is um, we have Green Energy Forum. Uh, Robert Picconi has graciously offered to do a Green Energy Forum on the 25th of September, which is an hour and a half, a 90-minute short circuit about how to think about green energy, how to innovate green energy, and the types of green energy that we're going to be looking at. So we also have a customer insight and design thinking forum coming up that is sponsored by Harmon. And David Slump, one of our ISU alums, will be moderating that forum. Um, and that will be on customer insight, how do we understand customer insight and design thinking. Anyone is eligible, faculty, staff, student. Uh, we are looking at side-by-side -side innovation. Uh, we also have a session coming up on the 16th on intellectual property, how to innovate intellectual property, which features Daniel Rewalt, um, Jim Oliver, and uh, Elliot Weiner. And so we have some of these forums coming up very shortly, an innovation fair in the spring. And um, Abram, I'm trying to think, uh, have I missed anything? You know, Karen, I think you're doing a great job. It's, it's hard to keep track of all the exciting things that are happening. And so that's why it'll be so great if you want to check out the Student Innovation Center website, which has links to many of the things we're talking about. And you can access that from the link we dropped in the chatter by searching for Iowa State Student Innovation Center in your, in your uh, browser window. I think now would be a great time, Karen, if you don't mind. Um, Nakaya has a question that she can share for you. And I think it will be a great way to frame the real value that the next set of set speakers will offer as we go through the semester. Nakaya? Absolutely. Thanks, Abram. So, Karen, I'm seeing a lot of questions um, coming in from students who are very excited about this initiative, and they're trying to figure out where innovation fits in um, their pursuit of the next step. So, when they're applying for jobs, how is Innovate at Iowa State, the Student Innovation Center, how does all of that just fit together? Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you asked, Nakaya, because we've actually built a program that's going to be launched. There's actually a contest for students to help us build this program, and it's called the, our DASH contest. You'll see it on our website. And uh, we have a student innovation fellows program that takes them through the whole core, mindset, experiences, meaningful contribution, by connecting them with industry stakeholders. So for their Iowa State journey and beyond, even a high school program, for innovation fellows and training, even before they get here. So we have a cycle to help them go through and a way to direct them and help them go through the circuit. And once they accomplish the circuit, this can go right on the resume. So that when they go to that employer, they can say, I have completed an innovation circuit that isn't just about me doing my coursework and about me um, completing uh, and being an excellent student. It is an and. I have done those other things like understanding how to think about innovation and how to invite myself into your corporate innovation conversation. I know how to do that. I want to be partner with you in that. I want to contribute. Here's how I understand contribution looks like. Help me explain that. And then 
a student can say, I actually, in order to get this innovation award, I had to do meaningful contribution. I had to contribute to something greater than myself in a very tangible way. And the beauty of this program is it's innovation for anyone, anywhere. So that means you don't have to have a GPA. You don't have a certain GPA. You don't have to be um, a, a student in some excellence program. You don't have to, and, and although that's part of it too, uh, you don't have to be someone who wants to start a business. You don't have to be enrolled in a specific course. This is for any of our students and our high school that come on board, our industry partners. Uh, we have innovation industry partners. We have innovation faculty. Um, so we are building this with them and everywhere. Thanks, Karen. And then I have one more question. Um, we have a student here who's interested in criminal um, justice. And so can you talk about innovating within current processes and systems and talking about that a bit more? Oh my gosh, uh, so, so delightful. Uh, two things. One, we are looking at social innovation. How do we create these conversations and these public conversations that are socially impactful? politically impactful um, as it relates to civic innovation, these change maker conversations. So social entrepreneurship and the College of Design is doing a fabulous job in elevating some of these conversations and students can look to, we're going to be really focused on civic innovation and how we have that conversation and operating uh, and offering opportunities for that. Um, also, one of the champions of this conversation is the library. The library is going to be focused on uh, expect and anticipate to be very excited about your new experience of our library. Our library is going to be leading conversations about access, about how do I participate through this global portal to the world, to potential resource and um, research. How do I participate in a conversation that equalizes our world, that um, creates open access that levels the playing field because I get to access through materials conversations that are going on in the world. So we have two really big portals for access. One is our library, which provides the resource and the scaffolding and the support to that global conversation. And also this flagship innovator series, which provides students this permeable membrane. So, and it's just the beginning. There are several other resources in our university that do that in different ways. But that's how we get involved from a criminal justice standpoint and looking at really influencing the social conversation that's going on and participating and inviting the social conversation in. Well, thank you so much, uh, Karen. Um, I, one of the things that I think is super exciting is that a, a lot of the questions we're seeing from, from our audience members are ones that are, are big questions that we'll, we'll keep answering in our subsequent series. So I just want to remind everyone, our flagship series is live and you can register for future events. It's every Friday while our um, academic session is going on at the same time from 12 to 1.30. And we look forward to engaging with you and uh, we look forward to continuing to answer your questions uh, that you may have as you're listening to our speakers and engaging with their unique insights and perspectives. Karen, would you care to give a final thought here? Yes, I really would. Um, one thing we're doing that's really different, so a lot of the programs we're offering are very different than any other experience students are going to get anywhere else. This series alone is very different. In part, we've opened it to the world. So um, this is not a time to compete and compare. This is a time to unite and inspire. So everyone's invited in. We are really leveling the playing field. And so I think that's very important to remember. The other thing is we are doing a 24 hour dash every Friday. They can anticipate that um, we're going to have some sort of conversation about innovation. And what I would really love is for students to be very deliberate, our faculty, our staff, even our industry stakeholders listening to be really deliberate about at least once a week. What am I thinking? What's new? How can I contribute in the world? How can we, to Rick uh, Sanders' conversation, how can we, how will we, how might we, um, and more than that, 
How do we involve others in this effort to create this innovation movement? So at least that 24 hours, their students will find that we're doing a lot of things between Thursday at 4 p.m. and Thursday at probably, we're even innovating the time window. So Friday at 7 p.m., right? So we're innovating what a day looks like because there are no boundaries here. This is a grand invitation into opportunity and we're encouraging students to really think about that. So Abram, I'm wondering if any of our other speakers have anything else that they wanna offer before we go. Go Cyclones. How about that as we go to game week, game day? Yeah, I want to say something as well for all the students there. Let me put my... Yes, Anna Luz, by the way, is also, um, she is a co-champion and in, in part of our innovation team. So thank you, Anna. I realized we didn't have you right don't worry, don't worry. It's good that we have a failure so that we have a new beginning. That's what I was answering one of the students and then we can check the system. Uh, for you students, um, the greatest thing that I find in all of these programs and all these investments that we're doing now in Innovate at Iowa State is that you will have an opportunity to work with each other and meet students from other departments, other colleges, up and down, vertically, horizontally, uh, in the shop, in a lecture, in a course, in a training, in a workshop, but amongst all of you so that we talk about what Karen was saying, a culture of cooperation, of community engagement within your community, which is Iowa State. So we would invite you also to be an ambassador of innovation. So if you f you see a flagship series uh, speaker that you like or a training that you did to take it further to your faculty, to your staff, to your friends, to your family, to your parents, and be an ambassador of this innovative mindset that we want to create here at, at the university. So you're in it as well. You also need to lead. It's not just that we are putting everything on the program for you, but yeah. it's inviting you to also design the program with us. And that is on you as well, but we hope that we can do this together. And Anna, who better to speak to that than somebody who does design? Yeah. <laughs> what I want to encourage you to do is, um, uh, Jim, we probably need to put my email address on our uh, innovation website. Yep. So um, I am meeting with students. Um, we have students doing theme park innovation, students doing green energy. We have students doing open option. We have students doing change maker. Uh, we have engineers without borders that are doing a fabulous job of innovating in Ulo, Africa, mm -hmm. in, a, in so many ways, a medical clinic, water irrigation, um, shea butter uh, products. So we have students doing this everywhere and anywhere, and we are attempting to work with them to elevate and think big because they can think big, and we're going to help them do that. So please contact us. Um, any one of us, and mm -hmm. we are happy to facilitate that conversation. Absolutely. And I just want to one more time thank Karen for all her hard work and in the networking and the coordination. A lot of people have heard from Karen and have volunteered to step up and, and make this thing real. Uh, Abram, thank you for, for hosting. You're a great moderator and a great colleague to have on board. Uh, everybody else on the team, Nakaya and, and Anna and uh, Annie, everybody who's been pulling hard. And Rick, thanks for taking some time to, uh, to talk about. We look forward to having your crew in the building and making that connection uh, successful. So I'm really excited about the next uh, few months, the next few years, and really making this thing sing. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. All right. Yeah, next week. Next week. Bye, guys.